Welcome back to the shop, everybody. Today, I'm gonna to continue working on the blacksmith vise. The first thing I need to do is get this blacksmith vise all welded out so we can get it sent to powder coat. So let's tackle that right now. I'm gonna be welding with 1 16th diameter dual shield wire. This is gonna lay a big, nice, fat bead and hopefully get this project done and over with rather quickly. I really like using dual shield wire because it's three times faster than stick welding and it's easy to weld in all positions. All the metal needs to be blemish free if you want a good looking powder coat. If you think the powder will hide scratches or defects, it just won't do it. It actually makes them more visible. I really like the melted metal look, so I round all the corners and it also keeps the coating from chipping off. <sighs> well guys, I am so happy that that vise is on the trailer, finished and ready to go to powder coat because I need a little bit of time to make some finishing components on this vise. So the first thing on that list is going to be finishing the screw that we started in part two. So let's start with the screw and get it ready to accept a handle. So I wanna keep my options open when it comes to the handle. So I'm machining a universal attachment point that'll allow me to make changes later. You never know what could be attached to this screw. Maybe a gear, a gearbox, a chain, sprocket, or even something hydraulic could be attached. Well, we have our screw all finished up. So we have a universal end all machined into this spindle with a screw, a keyway. Now we can pretty much attach anything we want to the end of this. But let's talk about handle design for a minute. This is the fireball vise that we made last year around Thanksgiving. And it has a really comfortable center of screw to floor height of 37 inches. That's easy to turn, operate, it's comfortable, you don't have to reach. So let's take a look at the big gigantic vise for a moment. Even though it's huge, it has a much lower center line screw height than a traditional bench does. This sits at about 27 inches instead of the 37 inches, which makes it really hard to operate because now I have to bend over to grab a traditional style handle and you have this weird rowing motion that just does not feel comfortable, especially if you have to hold something in the end of the vise. So you have this weird awkward movement. The ergonomics of the vise are a little bit strange, but I have a solution that I'd like to try that I think I can solve all of this at one time. So let me show you what I'm looking for. So where I'd like to start first is making a machined hub that's gonna attach to our existing screw. And then I'd like to put some spokes that's gonna come off that hub to hold a ring. I'd like to make them have an offset, kind of like a cast part. And then to really go over to the top, I'd like to find some wood. <coughs> I'd like the ring to look like a custom knife handle with some segmented pieces. I think it'll give it a really elegant look. Take a look at this wheel. Well, it's not the real wheel. This is a prototype that I made out of wood. I actually cut some spokes out of some two by fours on the water jet 
in that cool S-curve style that I'm looking for. And I also made a walnut ring to kind of get the overall shape and feel and see if this is something that I'm looking for. But I'm glad I made a wood prototype because this is going to be extremely challenging to build out of metal. <laughs> First things first, the amount of wood that this wheel uses is a lot. So choosing the wood carefully that I'm gonna use, that's gonna be something I need to take into consideration. So the other problem I noticed was getting all these spokes in the correct orientation and how I'm gonna hold them there when I go to weld them to the hub on the real deal. Gluing wood to wood is one thing, but when you're welding, you need to figure out a good solution for that. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. And also, how am I going to polish? Because I want these spokes to be really shiny. This is going to be a big project to build this wheel. But in order to make this happen, we're going to have to start cutting some parts on the water jet. So let's do that now. Take a look at how cool this ring is that the water jet cut for us. Now it's still cutting the spokes out, so we'll check in with that when it's all done. But we're going to make the most important decision on this whole project, and that's selecting the wood that I'd like to wrap this ring with. So let's check it out. So this is a 16 inch diameter wheel. And as you can see, I don't have a piece of wood big enough to make a one piece solid wood grip around this whole piece. So the challenge is how do I get smaller pieces to wrap around this and make it all look good? So this is what I came up with. And this is a termination block or a beauty piece of metal that are gonna slip around the perimeter, making now five sections on each side of the wheel. As you guys know, cutting anything arched or circular is a big waste of material because they just don't nest very well. And having smaller pieces is really going to save on that material or this exotic wood that's pretty special and hard to come by. So I have 25 contestants from all around the world and only one can be paired with the wheel. So it's time for the Birchler. Let's meet the contestants. The first contestant is Lignum Vitae, all the way from the Caribbean. It's known for being one of the hardest woods in the world, which makes it perfect for turning into a wood wheel. Another wood that's beautiful is Black Palm. All the way from tropical Asia, it's very straight grain and lack of growth rings will really make the curved scales hard to match up and look like one piece. But it is a stunning looker. The next contestant is Desert Ironwood, native to the state of Arizona and also one of the hardest woods found in the United States. Its wild, fine grain structure makes this ideal, but the small trunk size that the tree grows in makes it really hard to find large enough pieces. Making the trip all the way from Texas is Osage Orange. This is one tough hedge and is also really common for making bow staves. So we know it can hold up to the abuse to be put on a wheel, but the color is just a little bit too wild. From the land down under is the rare red melee burl. The random grain structure of the burl along with the hardness and the color makes this a fantastic choice. Last but not least, Catalox from Mexico with its beautiful reddish brown and almost black color make it a real looker. Also one of the hardest woods with this Janka rating of 3660 but it's just barely big enough to cut a knife scale out of and I'd hate to destroy this whole beautiful block for just a couple scales which would be a waste. So with all of that out of the way who's the one that's gonna get married with the wheel? Red Melee Burl!
We're gonna have to wait a little bit for the vacuum chamber to do its thing and pull all the air out. But in the meantime, let's go work on the spokes that the water jet cut out for us. These spokes have some really cool shape to them. All the way from the S-curve to the taper that I ground in with the go-kart grinder. And in order to really see the contours, I'd like to have them chrome or nickel plated. And to get the best shine out of it, they need to be smooth and scratch free. I found this really cool abrasive assortment kit that Ferd makes that makes these little polishing projects a breeze. I threw the spokes into the tumbler to smooth out all the edges and curves. So let me show you what we got going on here. This is kind of a tricky little thing to fabricate and keep perfect. So I have the outside ring, which is held in place by these inserted clamps with swivel bases to nail this divider ring for the wood. So this outside ring is secure. The next thing inside that is this machined water jet cut plate that's holding this pin centered so that this hub stays where it needs to be. And all the spokes are at the correct height. The hub's at the correct height because we have magnetic shims that are varying thickness. If you guys don't know what magnetic shims are, I'll put a link in the description below. So everything's held in place it's at the correct height. It's secure. It's time to weld. I really like the way this wheel's been fabricated. It turned out awfully straight, so I'm glad I really fixtured it nice and tight and it's looking, well, very wheel-like now. But what I do wanna do is get this wood on here because I'm really anxious to see what it's gonna look like. So let's pull it out of the oven because it should be cured by now and get it installed on the wheel. This wheel is like building five knife handles all at the same time. I really didn't have to stabilize the wood, but it gives me a peace of mind that they're gonna last a lifetime. And I know it can take the abuse if I accidentally hit it with a hammer. So I got the wheel all fabricated up and it looks amazing. But I think to take it up that notch, I wanna have it nickel plated. And I did some phone calling around and my local plater here is about three weeks out and that's just not gonna cut it. So I put together this DIY home brew nickel plating. The first thing you do is pour vinegar into a large container. And then you sprinkle in some salt to help with the electricity. Basically, you wanna saturate the solution with nickel. And that takes about a day or two to make this. And then when you're ready to start nickel plating apart, you need to clean it really well in some soap and water. Add it to the solution. I added a little bit of heat with a engine block heater from an auto parts store. And then added some aquarium bubblers to help mix the whole solution together and keep things turning. And then I added about two and a half to five volts of power coming in through the nickel anode and then negatively charging the part and attracting all the nickel in the solution. Hopefully this should take about an hour, we'll see. And hopefully we have a nickel plated part. And it's gonna be a really thin coating, probably only about less than a thousandth of an inch thick, but I think it's gonna add some brightness to the overall part and hopefully maybe even give it some rust protection. So as we're waiting for this nickel plating to do its thing, I say we make a cool handle for the jack. I think it'd be fun to make a knob using the shaper chips. They came off of the machining of the jaw. So I mixed up some two-part epoxy, threw my shaper chips into a silicone mold, and then inserted into a pressure pot. That way the resin turns out crystal clear. This usually takes about two hours to demold, 
And now I have a blank ready to be turned whenever I'm ready to go. So let's turn it on the lathe and see what we can do to make this thing look amazing. I find it easier to turn the knob when it's glued to the shaft. So some UV resin helps glue it into place. And then the key to getting a crystal clear finished product is sand through the grits, 400 all the way up to 1200, and then a really good polishing on a buffing wheel. I know a lot of you guys love the shaper chips, so I've made them available on the Fireball Tool website. That way you guys could have a souvenir from the Big Vice project or use them in your own castings or maker projects. I'd like to replace this valve with something a little bit nicer looking and a little bit easier to use. So let's do that too. I want the handle to look like it grew right out of the side of the valve, so I'm hiding the threads with a counter bore to make it look nice and clean and simple. We got one knob, that looks really classy. I like that. And then we have our pusher stick. That looks pretty cool. I made it a little bit longer to give me a little more leverage. That looks pretty cool in there too. So in order to get this lever here to end right where I wanted to, I just took the end of it and I filed this little nipple to where it stopped. And all this nipple is doing is pushing on a ball that's allowing the fluid to come back and the fluid goes around the ball and around this stem. So by changing the length of this, you have enough threads here to do that. So that's how you control the orientation of the lever arm, being that there's only one hole in it. So now that we have both handles done, they turned out amazing. I think the only thing left to do is finish up that wheel. So let's get it out of nickel plating. I'm using this cool epoxy from 3M that I use to assemble golf clubs. If it can hold up to that kind of abuse, it will definitely work on a wheel when it sees vibration from the hammering and any kind of other abuse that I throw at it. Look how wild this wheel turned out. This thing is just off the charts, ridiculous. Who would ever put something this nice on a big giant blacksmith's vice? It looks like it belongs on a luxury yacht. But overall, I'm so happy with the way this turned out. It exceeds all my expectations. The nickel plating, whoa, what do I even start about that? For what kind of results we got on this wheel with a DIY setup here in this shop, it's fabulous. It polishes up beautifully, it looks great, combined with the red melee burl wood that we have on here and the brass screws that hold everything together. It just looks really wild. This thing is heavy. It's gonna perform like a flywheel when we mount it on the vise. Gonna look fabulous with the powder coat when we get the vise back and I cannot wait to see it on there. So hopefully you guys will join me when we mount this wheel on the vise and we start crushing stuff and I'll see you guys there. The pressure pot, the pressure pot, uh, 
the pressure pro of the pressure pro of blah, 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 blah. so after some careful thought into uh, Rusty, rusty, crusty.